Hello, so Physics Era Thursday today and I've got circular motion for you today. And it is one of the key misconceptions at both GCSE and A-level physics about the forces that are involved. Okay, now remember this. If something is moving in a circle, then there is a resultant force towards the center of the circle. Now there is a big misconception there because people think there can't be a resultant force because it's not accelerating. Well hang on a minute, acceleration is a change in velocity and velocity has speed and direction. So even though this object is going at a constant speed, its direction is constantly changing so it is accelerating. Its velocity is changing so it's accelerating. Okay. Now that is a tricky one. Okay, because sometimes it's not obvious that there is a resultant force. Here the resultant force is provided by the tension in the string. It's really important to challenge any misconceptions you have. If you think you know something, great. But actually when you start learning new things about it, if you realise, oh, I, I don't, don't get it as fully as I did, you need to chuck out your old understanding and you need to really get a new understanding. That is what we mean by a useful error. Um, Derek from Veritasium has got a really interesting video about challenging misconceptions, so I'll put a card to here. I think I know where this misconception comes from, because actually if an object is moving around a circle and at any point you take away that centripetal force, that force towards the centre of the circle, then the object continues to move in the direction it was moving before. It, we say it flies off at a tangent. So that makes us think that maybe there must be a force towards the outside of the circle. And um, actually you're going to see a lot of diagrams that look like this. And that is where you get this common misconception that there are two forces acting at right angles. Now I really prefer to see those diagrams with the V drawn, not from the object like it is a force, but just above the object to say that's its speed moving around the circle. It's really important that V is speed, it is not a force. The only force in this situation is the centripetal force, or at the very least, the resultant force in this situation is the centripetal force. There are some factors which govern how large that centripetal force is, and I'll do a video uh, more aimed at A level for how can we calculate what size that force is going to be. But and I'll just give you a little tease of it. This equation here is the way I remember it. F equals mv squared over r. Because if this is the centripetal force, then these are the three factors. And also understanding that algebra tell you which way they affect the size of the force. So greater mass needs a greater force. Greater velocity needs a much greater force because v squared. Smaller radius needs a greater force. Now at GCP level, largely with centripetal motion, that we're talking about satellites. And there are a couple of types of satellites that you need to know, and a couple of things you need to know about this, their orbits. Um, a higher orbit is going to have a lower force because gravity is less further away. Okay? And that means it's going to have a smaller speed, and that means it's going to have a longer time period. So if we illustrate that, further away, it's going slower and it takes longer to do one full rotation, it's time period. Okay, if it is closer, then gravity is much greater. So its speed at any point is greater and its time period is much shorter. So when we're talking about satellites, we have two main types of orbits that we need to know. There's low polar, okay, and that has a very short time period. It's very useful for satellites that need to move to different parts of the Earth because the Earth is constantly spinning around beneath it and in about 60 to 90 minutes that satellite can be above any point on Earth. And then there is a geostationary orbit and the geostationary orbit orbits around the equator and it has a time period of 24 hours, meaning it is always above the same point in, on Earth. And it is a much higher orbit, so it's much further out and above the equator. I really hope that helps. There's much more interesting stuff to get out of circular motion. So challenge those misconceptions and make sure that you understand what you're talking about. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. 
that really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.